Welcome to Discovering. Tonight, Kristen's in the Keweenaw for some UP racing action. The 2020 Copper Dog 150 proved to be another exciting race weekend. It's one of our favorite races. It's a local race for us. We love coming here. We love the community. And we'll hear from the Department of Natural Resources Director, Dan Eichinger. Stick around. That's all tonight, right here on Discovering. The secret streams that flow beneath the cliffs of colored stone. Forest thick and healthy with birch and pine and oak. Surrounded by the greatest lakes this world has ever known. The black bear's awesome presence as he roams the hills and fields. The call of the timber wolf, the loon's lonesome trill. The eagle soaring high above, the trout lies deep and still. These are what I treasure, the only way I measure feelings that I have for this fine land. There is so much to discover when you're a longtime lover of northern Michigan. One thing you first should experience at least once in their lifetime is a sled dog race. Someone told me it's more exciting than the Daytona 500. I've never been to the Daytona, but after attending the Copper Dog 150 in the Keweenaw, I'll take his word for it. The excitement of the dogs, mushers, spectators, volunteers, and coordinators is contagious. Everywhere you go, you can feel the energy, you can feel people's highs, because you know everyone's excited, raring to go. When you go see the dogs, you can tell they're excited too and they're just ready to pound those harnesses and get out of here. The Copper Dog 150 is a three-day, three-race event with the opening ceremony Friday night in downtown Calumet, where 44 teams took off down the chute towards multiple Keweenaw communities. We have our 150 that's going to be going to Eagle Harbor. The 150 is 10 dogs, but they can leave with nine. Our 80 that's heading to Eagle River, uh, Michigan. The 80 is an eight dog pool, so they can have eight or seven. And then our uh, 25, our short race, is going to Gay. And then the CD25 is a six dog pool. There is a huge community, family atmosphere at the Copper Dog, and many people I talk to have been there since year one. Every year I come back because of my relationship with the mushers because I just love seeing their smiling faces with their smiling dogs and it just draws me in every year. Okay, out of here at 26 and Start launching at 34. Well. So we'll do that, Maddie. Thank Thanks. you. Derek Trudell, we're from right here in Calumet, Michigan, hometown race for us, and we'll be running the uh, Copper Dog 80 today. We have raced the Copper Dog every year. We've raced, uh, we did the 150 a couple times, we did the six dog, uh, and then when they open up the eight dog, we've run that each year, so they uh, had the eight dog. We've done well in the race here before. We won it last year, um, but it, it's a dog sled race. You know, you've got eight dogs, you've got 32 paws on the ground, you've got eight noses sniffing squirrels in the woods. I mean, there's no guarantees. Um, you know, if we have a good fast trail, I think, you know, we can do pretty well on that. Uh, that's kind of what we're built for. Sunday, you know, when it warms up, if the trail softens up, that'll be a little bit tougher for us. But uh, you just go out and you watch the dogs and, you know, my plan is to just get the most out of the dogs and where we finish, that's, it, just let the cards fly. My name is Chad Brands and I'm racing the 150. This will be my 14th year racing and it is my 8th year running in the Copper Dog. Unbelievable race, unbelievable organization. They put on one of the best races in the UP. I have a 10 dog team. My two leaders are Queso and Jetta. They are both two year olds, so I have two young leaders leading the team and the rest of the team comprised anywhere from two years old to six year olds. Good luck to all the mushers, and we'll see you guys at the finish line. My name is Christian Stevens. I'm from Alpena, Michigan, and I go to school at Michigan Tech in Houghton, and I'm racing the 150. So I started out 
in 2018. Um, whole backstory, I met a guy named Adam Schmidt who was going to Michigan Tech and he had this big glorious dream that he wanted to get more students involved with mushing. And so I played his game and for a while I couldn't dream of anything else. I was just like, all I wanted to do was get on the runners and hook up a team. I'm used to training in the woods on little one lane trails um, and sometimes we get onto snowmobile trails but these are all pretty much on snowmobile trails. And these are hard fast so the teams that can lope really fast and love those hard trails are going to succeed. So we'll see what these guys do. I mean they're used to heavy sleds and you know tough windy woodland trails. The one lead dog Patton, he's a seasoned race dog. He ran the Iditarod twice and he's ran in a lot of other races too. He's one of those dogs that just can like tell you everything that's going on. If there's another team that's two miles ahead, he's looking back at you and he's trying to tell you. Um, Harvey, who's a young, kind of gung-ho, run straight ahead and don't think about anything else, is with him. Um, and I've got uh, a lot of their brothers and sisters behind them. I think that they're just gonna perform. They, they know where they're at. Um, they're all pretty dialed in, so I think it's gonna go well. It was a beautiful night to run last night. Nice clear night, stars were out, trail was awesome. The trails always are awesome up here at this race. Oh, it was amazing. I mean, uh, I kept them at a pretty conservative speed. These dogs are um, trained to trot rather than lope. They're a lot bigger than a lot of the Alaskan Huskies that are here, so uh, they'll actually injure themselves or blow a shoulder or something if they lope. So I kept them at the fastest trot that we could go, and it went really well. Today we leave from Eagle Harbor and we head up to Copper Harbor. That'll be the second leg of the race. It's a 38 mile run today. We're gonna to be leaving with nine dogs. Uh, we left with nine dogs last night leaving Calumet. Putting a new sub in today. In this race, it's a, it's a pool race. It's a 10 dog pool, so we can, we can run nine. We can mix and match, run 10 one day, nine one day, and go back and forth. Of any of the 10 that we check in, we have to register 10 at the start of the race. And we can run them any way we want after that. Three of ours for the dogs, homemade. They get a little bit of beef in them, a little bit of kibble in them, and then they're just frozen with water. Morning time, we get them up in the morning, get everybody stretched out, take them out of the box, and then I'm stretch out, move around, um, give them some more water, get them hydrated for the day. It's gonna be a little bit of a warmer day today. Get a snack back in them, and then we're back out on the trail again this morning at nine o'clock. It's gonna be a quick finish today. So I think you're gonna see teams stacked up on top of each other because we do a reverse start. So the slowest team goes out first and the fastest team goes last. This is my first time handling, but I've also always wanted to do handling. Our volunteers are the best. Volunteers from our race officials, our race marshal, judges, race director, all the way down to the people who scoop poop here. They're the best we can ask for, and we're so thankful for them. We get between three to 4,000 people that come to watch the race. We also have 685 shifts for our volunteers to cover. That's pretty good if you, you know, that's, that's a community coming out and helping out with our volunteering. Good dog. Good dog. Oh. Oh. Thank you. We left with nine, all nine came in. Um, no problems with everybody, so. Good dog. Now they get the long rest. Everybody gets them to rub down. They'll get a big meal tonight. So they get like a 12 hour rest here. So everybody gets a long time to rest and recoup and, and uh, tomorrow's a 43 mile day. Dogs have a lot of dedication and passion. They're the ones that fuel me. When you see them at the start line, it's like crazy foam coming out the mouth, they're barking, screaming, they wanna go. 
But once you get out on the trail and they really get rolling, they're looking back at you, they're feeding off of your energy, and it's just a huge teamwork effort. So that's what, you know, pulled me into this. So today is Sunday morning. We just had all of our teams leave for the 150 and for the 80, and we're heading to Calumet. Um, it, everyone's smiling, happy. It's a beautiful day. A little warm, but we uh, we think that by the time the teams get in, it's going to be still perfect temperatures. It's wonderful to be out in the woods with your, you know, 10 or 12 of your best friends and working through any complications together. I like just being out on the trail, spending time with the dogs. It's quiet. Once you're out of town and once you're out in the woods, it's just you and the dogs. It's quiet. There's no noise. There's no, no phones ringing. It's just being with this group of mushers who get you and they understand when your family is like, Oh, okay, I don't, don't want to go out and it's zero degrees out, but you know, the, our Mushin family gets us in. It's so much fun just to see them and hang out with them, go out for dinner and laugh. And you know, it's like your cousin that you haven't seen in months. And you just all hook up and have a good time. It, it's a competition. We're out there racing each other. But the side that really makes it so great to me is the people that are involved with it. Um, Everybody will do, any of these racers will do anything to help you out. All the mushers are really great and being a rookie here in the 150, you know, they've all been really gracious and coming up and talking to me, giving me some hints and tips. And so I, I just feel really great right now. In fifth position, he was 10 minutes off the lead. One of our former champions, Pete Dalton. Welcome in, Martha. Welcome in. Welcome in. Oh man, they did a they did a lot better job than I thought they were going to do with the heat. Um, the sun was really beating down on the trail that made it really slushy and with all the snowmobiles on it. No, I mean, they did really well. I, I can't believe that they went that fast. And right at the end, we caught up to one of my kennel owners, Tom Bauer, and kind of like a photo finish, so it was really cool. Tom Bauer, number four. Christian Stevens, number eight. Welcome in. Tom was in eighth place heading out this morning. Christian. Welcome in, Jerry. I love this race weekend up here. The uh, so many people. I mean, the community is all involved with it. You know, we've been running the race every year, and we're local. And so I don't know if people look up my number. In the middle of the night, we'll be at a road crossing, and you know, I'm hearing people cheering me on. Uh, it's just, it's just really cool. Dogs gave their heart, everything they had, and I don't have anything left either. <laughs> Coming in next, one of our local favorites, Tad Prince, in the Comfort Dog 150. Starting in 12th place this morning. Chad, welcome in. Overall weekend, good. We had a very good weekend. Uh, a lot of top teams that come to this race. Excellent crew to race with. Everybody gets along with everybody good. And very good competition to race against. So we like to put our dogs up against the better competition just to see where we're at. That's what we look for. Everybody's got wagon tails at the end. I was in Marquette recently for an exclusive interview with DNR director Dan Eichinger. 
Hey, uh, everybody. Good to be with Brian again. Um, my name is Dan Eichinger, the director of the Department of Natural Resources. A um, couple of things that I think might be of interest to uh, outdoors people here in the Upper Peninsula. One of the things I've heard a lot about uh, over the last couple of weeks are uh, boating access sites and being able to get into our boating access sites, uh, having them plowed out, cleared out, and that kind of thing. And we're going to be spending some time uh, talking to our anglers, talking to folks, figuring out those spots that are, need to be real high priorities for us in the department, and then figuring out over the next few months where we can partner with local groups, uh, local government in some cases, to make sure that those high priority spots are getting plowed out and that we're letting people know where they can get in and where some, you know, some of these boating access sites are being plowed out now by our friends at the county road commissions. Um, and I think we can do a much better job of sort of getting, getting the word out so that folks know uh, if they're going to leave on a nice fishing trip, they can go out uh, someplace so they know that they're going to be able to get out onto the lake and have a good time. So that's something that uh, I know we've been hearing from a lot of folks about. Our team up in the Upper Peninsula are going to be working with uh, all of our, you know, all of our sport fishing groups and all the different organizations um, that have reached out to us to see if we can do a better job of getting those places um, plowed out and cleaned out so folks can go out on the hard water and have a good time. Uh, one of the other things I thought um, might be of interest to folks, um, we had, uh, it's February here, uh, so that means a lot of things, but one of the things it means for those of us who work in Lansing is that it's budget season. And the governor made her executive recommendation to the legislature here about 10 days ago. And there are a couple things that I think would be of particular interest to folks. One of them I hear a lot about is our uh, UP, uh, particularly our deer habitat and our deer wearing complexes. And one of the things we talk about a lot when we talk about our deer wearing complexes is our lowland conifer stands and our white cedar stands. And one of the things that I think we've struggled with over a, a lot of years is figuring out how to best regenerate some of those lowland conifer and white cedar species. So there's a pretty good investment in our budget this year that the governor's recommending $500,000. Uh, that we're gonna, uh, that's gonna kick off uh, a, kind of a long-term research project so that we can better understand how to more successfully regenerate uh, lowland conifer and those white cedar species, help to make sure that um, there's a lot of vigor and vitality in our deer wintering complexes. We know how important those are for our deer populations here. Uh, and we frankly just need to do a better job of trying to understand what's preventing us from being able to successfully regenerate those species. Uh, so that's one, of the, that's one of the features in our budget this year. And uh, another piece that I think would be kind of interesting is um, been a big investment uh, that we've made both through the Natural Resources Trust Fund and through this executive recommendation. Uh, for some shooting range development. So we're going to have $4.4 .4 million. A big piece of that's going to be some federal dollars. Um, couple that up with some of the Natural Resources Trust Fund dollars that we made available back in December. And we're going to be able to do, do some work on some shooting ranges. So there's one, one in particular out over in Ontonagon County, a great partnership with the local sportsman's club there that's really helped us uh, to try and provide a public shooting opportunity for the public here. Uh, so there's a big investment that's going to be made in that facility over in Ontonagon County. Uh, we've done a lot of work here in uh, Marquette County, where we are now with Richmond Township, and trying to get um, trying to get a, 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 an outdoor public shooting range uh, kind of off the ground. It's been like seven or eight years we've been working on that project. I think we're really close uh, to being able to sign a lease to make that reality. Um, so I'm excited about that. And then downstate, there are some other uh, shooting range uh, investments that we're going to be making uh, with that program as well. And then maybe the last thing that I would just mention uh, is that we are uh, starting to roll out our new retail sale system. So uh, we had one of the first uh, point of sale systems that was ever developed in, in the country. You know, it's been I think 26 or so years that we've been ha that we've had that system. So a couple of years ago, the uh, Department of Natural Resources put that out for bid, and everything uh, should be up and ready to go on March 1st with the start of the new license year. So folks should look for a much better uh, buying experience. It should be a lot easier for all of our retail partners uh, to be able to use the system, use the equipment. Uh, it should make our transaction time a lot faster. Uh, and then on uh, the online component of that, it should be a much, a much easier, much more iterative process for people to be able to find what they're looking for much more easily online uh, with the online license buying experience. And then once we kind of get that piece out and rolling, then there's the phase two, which is going to look at you know, development of things like a mobile app uh, and some of the different technologies and, and just kind of gadgets and gadgets that we can uh, incorporate into that system to just provide different products and things that people have been asking us about 
for a long time and we're kind of finally in a place where we're going to be able to assist them to catch up with some of the technological advances uh, that a lot of you have been asking us about. So those are just a few of the highlights, uh, things that are going on uh, here in the Department of Natural Resources. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you next week right here on Upper Michigan's very own Discovering.